Now, if you're a Blues fan, you may well still be celebrating today following the club's historic win over Arsenal at Wembley yesterday to take the Carling Cup, of course, but the party's not over yet. Birmingham City are planning a victory parade at their St Andrews Stadium next Sunday. It'll be the first time in 48 years Blues fans have been able to pay tribute to a team which has won a major trophy. Well, Nick's at the ground now. Nick, an incredible win. What's the atmosphere like there, then? Oh, it's a lovely feeling. Everyone you talk to has got a huge smile on their face, you know. And I'm actually in the Legends Lounge, surrounded by photographs of some of the great heroes from the past of Birmingham City, uh, such as Gil Merrick, Trevor Francis, Bob Hatton, Bob Latchford and so on, Kenny Burns. Uh, and I think they're going to have to add some more, aren't they? The class of uh, 2011, the guys who brought back this. The club's first major trophy for 48 years. We'll be talking more about that later with uh, the club's best-known fan, Jasper Carrot. And also, later in the programme, we'll be rounding up all yesterday's events from Wembley. First of all, Nick Clitheroe has been getting today's reaction to Birmingham's big win. Yesterday, the players were parading the Carling Cup around Wembley. This afternoon, it was the fans' turn to get their hands on the trophy. These lucky supporters just happened to be at St Andrews when the Cup arrived. And the biggest smile of all was on the face of Glenn Page, who'd made it to Wembley from the earthquake disaster zone in New Zealand. I didn't know whether I was going to get a... It was hide and harsh whether I could come, you know what I mean? But 41 years supporting Blues, my, my, my big and said, you've got to go, Dad, so I had to come, yeah, and it was well worth it. This was also an opportunity for the people who make the club tick behind the scenes to get their rewards. So many smiling faces, so many happy voices. Even better when the club is your passion as well as your profession. Our players did us proud yesterday, they really did. And to get the hands on the trophy in the office, only, you know, 24 hours later and to be able to lift it up and, uh, and chuck it around was absolutely fantastic as well. In fact, there's so much cup fever, they were already queuing for FA Cup quarter-final tickets. Absolutely incredible. Never known an atmosphere like it. Friend flew in from Australia. He was, yeah, he's come over for four days just for this game. Absolutely gobsmacked he was. Felt um, happy and to say well done to the team. Fantastic. You can't describe it. And the trophy will be back here at St Andrews on Sunday when the fans will get a chance to see it as the players parade it round the St Andrews pitch. In fact, everywhere you looked in the city, there was a Birmingham shirt. The BBC WM breakfast presenter Phil Upton, a Villa fan, had to wear one after losing a bet with a Blues fan. And even Elvis the Hound Dog was proudly sporting his colours during his lunchtime constitutional. Nick Clitheroe, BBC Midlands Today, Birmingham. Well, I'm here with Jasper now in the Legends Lounge. What a feeling, eh? What a feeling. This is our new trophy room, by the way, yes. We're expecting a lot more silverware, Nick. How's it feel? It's right in front of you. You can touch it's it. It's just unbelievable. I mean, I've waited 56 years wow. for a real trophy win from Birmingham. It's, mm. I, I remember the Leyland Daff Cup final. I mean, I, I mean, it was nothing compared with yesterday, obviously, but that was all we had to brag about, that no one ever else could win the Leyland Daff Cup. Just describe yeah. the, the moment when that goal, winning goal went in. Well, it was, it, it was unbelievable because um, we'd, we'd had a very one-eyed ref, I thought, anyway. And, and that was that incident right at the beginning of the game, about 10 minutes in, when Bowyer had gone through and they took him out. It was a penalty. And they, and they flagged him offside. I mean, he was miles onside. We, we should have had a woman running the line, you know, because they do know... Stop being controversial. Right. <clears throat> anyway, <throat> so... I mean, it was a farcical goal, really, we know that, but that normally happens to us. Mm. But suddenly, there, there was Owens, and, and, and he was just amazed that it had come to him, and he thought, well, i better put it in. And then I looked at the ref thinking he's bound to find something wrong with it, you know, he's got the wrong colour shoes on, and he's shouting, <laughs> and, he can, and he can disallow the goal. And, and I remember turning to the, the guy I was with, and we, you know, we'd come down together, and I just hugged him, and I said, this is it, we've done it. They can't, they can't come back from there. And sure enough, it was unbelievable. Yeah, fantastic. We'll chat again a little later, Jasper. Thanks okay. for that for the moment. Uh, we'll be back later, I say, with more on Blue's Big Cut win. But now, though, back to you, Suzanne, in the studio for more of the day's news. Thanks, Nick. Great to have Jasper and Elvis on the same programme, isn't it? Now